Hi there, welcome back to part two of the Home Assistant Complete Beginner's Guide for 2024. Now in part two of this video, it's gonna be slightly different to a lot of the other beginner videos on Home Assistant. This one is gonna allow you to get up and running with your first automation immediately. Part three will then follow on by explaining a whole lot more about the setup of Home Assistant. But I thought it'd be really cool to start off with doing three things. First of all, in this episode, we're gonna set up a Zigbee network, which is really cool for allowing you to set up sensors that are battery operated, such as the second component we're gonna use. This is a Zigbee PIR sensor, which will detect motion. The third thing we're gonna do today is we're going to use a Shelly switch which is gonna control the light. So as you walk into the room, the sensor senses you and it turns the light on. As you walk out, the sensor stops detecting and switches off the light. Let me show you how it's done. So the first thing we're gonna do in our fresh Home Assistant installation is go down to the username at the bottom. This is the one that you created when you logged in. You're gonna scroll down here and you're gonna click on this advanced mode. This is really important because it limits certain functionality later on if you haven't clicked this. Now our Home Assistant comes out of the box with a Wi-Fi connection because it's linked via your Ethernet directly to your router and it can communicate with Wi-Fi devices. But in order to run battery operated sensors, we need to have a Zigbee network, which is a really low power network and will allow those battery sensors to last for anywhere up to a year or even more. So in order to do that, we're going to use this little Sonoff Zigbee USB dongle. These are really cheap to buy and they work really well. I'll leave a description in the link below showing you where you can purchase this item. So plug your Zigbee dongle directly into the Home Assistant. You can plug it into any of the USB sockets on the back of the Pi. Once you've done that, you need to go along here to Settings, Devices and Services. Now you'll see that it's showing me a whole lot of devices that are on my network. And this is because I've got a lot of smart home devices already running, but I'm gonna show you later just how to connect up your first one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go along here and we're gonna go add integration, and then we're gonna type in ZHA, which stands for Zigbee Home Automation. So you can click on that, and you'll see here that it's picked up the Sonoff Zigbee 3 USB Dongle Plus, which is the one that we wanna set up. So we click on that, and we say Submit. Because now what it'll say is, do you wanna keep the network settings, upload a manual backup, or erase the settings and create a new network? So I'm going to say erase and create a new setup. So it's created it and now we can assign this to an area. I'm just gonna put it in the kitchen because that's where my home assistant is living. So next we're gonna set up our PIR sensor. This stands for passive infrared and it's a really simple old technology for measuring whether someone has entered into the room but it still works really well. So I'll leave a link once again for this in the description. So what we need to do now is pair this device. We hold the little button down for three seconds on the device, which will set it into pairing mode. Then go settings, devices and services, add integration, and then we search for Zigbee, and we say add Zigbee device. It will now search for that Zigbee device, which we've put into pairing mode. And there we go, it's found it, easy as that. And once again, we can select this. So I'm gonna put this in the kitchen again. The third device we're adding now is a relay. This will be used to switch the power on and off to the light. The beauty about using a relay like this, which sits behind the wall switch, is that you can still operate the manual switch to turn the light on and off. Now, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below showing you how to wire this Shelly up and also how to connect it to the Wi-Fi network. So now that your relay is all connected up and connected to Wi-Fi, you now come back to Home Assistant. Now, you can go along here to Notifications, New Devices Discovered, and it should pop it up as a device here immediately. So you can here see here that I've got a Shelly 1 PM. So all I do now is I select this device and I go Configure. 
It asks me, do I want to submit it? I say yes. Once again, we're selecting the kitchen as the area. It's always good, a good idea to put your devices in a certain room so that they're all grouped together and are easy to use and find. If we now go to the overview page of Home Assistant, you'll see that it's added the devices. So we've got here the switch for the Shelly, so turning the light on and off. We've got the motion detector, that's our PIR motion detector, and that's got motion and occupancy. So you can use either of these two. They do differ slightly, but for our purposes, we're gonna use motion for now. Um, this Shelly device also offers energy management. So if we turn the power on, you will see that it will start telling us the amount of power that that LED light is using. So it's using 3.7 watts. If I turn it off, it goes back to zero again. So in order to create the automation, we're gonna go along to settings, devices and services. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom and we're gonna go along to our Zigbee devices. So this is our Zigbee PIR sensor and we want to use this as the trigger. So I'm going to go and I'm gonna create a new automation and I'm going to use the PIR sensor as our trigger. So what we're gonna do is there's the device and when we want to trigger it is based on starting to detect motion. Now we can select a duration, but I'm not worried about that for now. What I wanna do is when I start detecting motion, I want to turn the light on. So I go down to the bottom and I go add an action. So the device we're gonna to want to turn on is the light. So if we drop down over here, we can see here that we've got our Shelly um, somewhere over there. There we go, there is our Shelly device. And the action that we want to do is we want to turn on the switch. So now we can save this. Now, if we wanna make this automation a little bit more clever, maybe we don't want the light turning on during the daytime. We can then go and add a condition. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna say add condition and it's going to be a time and location which is based on the position of the sun. So what we're gonna say is we only wanna turn the light on before sunrise and after sunset. So if we now go and save that, you'll see now when it starts detecting motion, it checks to see whether it's after sunset or before sunrise and then it turns the light on. So that's our first really simple automation. Now currently it's only turning the light on, but it's not turning it off after we leave the room. Now there is a more complex way that you can use a choice component to do this all in one automation, but because we're doing real basics at the moment, I'm gonna run it as two separate automations. So we've got a kitchen light on. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna copy this so we're going to say we want to duplicate this. It creates a new automation. And all we're going to do now is we're going to say when it stops detecting motion, then turn the light off. So we just select down over here and we say turn the light off. And then we go and save that and we just give that a name again. Well, that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed this part too. In part three, we'll be talking about a whole lot more of the basics of Home Assistant. So tune in again next time. And if you've enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. Bye for now.